Good morning. Uh, we are indeed, I think, fortunate to have the second session by Shri, with the respect to Shri D.R. Kartikeyan, uh, to, to hear him uh, on law, policy, and leadership. And actually, uh, as we have all seen, uh, Shri D.R. Kartikeyan has been, you know, very, very participative in hearing all the lectures, and we are really thankful for him, to him for that. Uh, in the chair, we have Shri Brigadier Rajendra Singh Pathania. Uh, who, who, about whom we actually have already, you know, we have, dis uh, whose profile we, have ju we just discussed in the sharing of participants. So I will be a bit brief if uh, Brigadier allows me so. so. Brigadier Pathani is an alumnus of the National Defense Academy and currently he is the commander, Indian Army, Faculty of Civil Engineering at the College of Military Engineering in Pune. Can I request the Brigadier to kindly chat this session and introduce the speaker? Thank you, sir. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have the proud privilege of uh, introducing to you a fellow Kalashi, as I've learned, uh, Shri D.R. Karthikyan, who is the former Director of Central Bureau of Investigation. Uh, he's been Director General, National Human Rights Commission, and Special Director, Spectre, uh, Special Director General of the CRPF. He's globally appreciated for leading the successful investigation and prosecution of the accused in the assassination of Shri Rajiv Gandhi, the former Prime Minister of India. I think some of us would have at that stage seen him on television, but since it was so far back, it would have been difficult to correlate now at this stage, but it's a pleasant surprise all the same to know he is the uh, acclaimed uh, person. He is a graduate in science from the Annamala University. He is also Bachelor of Law from the Madras University and has practiced as a lawyer for three years before joining the Indian Police Service. He was also Director of the Police Academy, Mysore, DCP Law and Order, Bangalore, DIG of Railway Police and Chief of Intelligence and Security for Karnataka. He has authored several articles in, and publications both within and outside India on varying subjects including human rights, terrorism, spirituality, interfaith harmony, farm crisis, water, solar, biofuel and renewable energy, environment, police reforms, corruption, and good governance. Shri Karthikyan has dedicated his life to promote peace, health, yoga, interfaith harmony, human rights, human responsibilities, rural development, farmers' welfare, protection and respect for environment, and renewable energy, care for the elders, and good governance. He was awarded Doctor of Honours by the International Open Wellness University at the World Congress on Integrated Medicine at Colombo in Sri Lanka. He has also been conferred with the prestigious Padam Shri in 2010 for his contribution to the field of Indian service. I don't know how many of you yesterday uh, during lunchtime, this card was handed out uh, to all of us. And if you see the list of, uh, he's been, I mean, if I start reading this, I'll, he'll, I'll run out on time for his lecture. So I suggest all of you would ha can have a look and see all his accomplishments. And I'll now request uh, Shri Karthikyan to please uh, do the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege to be in this uh, campus. A few years back, I was here participating in an international conference on uh, science and spirituality where I had the privilege of uh, sitting and talking and interacting with uh, some Nobel laureates and all that. The one name which comes to my mind is Charles Towns. He was 90 years even at that time. His wife was also 90 years. He was awarded a Nobel Prize for Maser, you know, the grandfather of Laser. And uh, his wife used to take meticulous notes all the time. I asked her, why did you do that? He said, suddenly you'll ask me who said what. Tell you such a, unfortunately, he's no more now. Now, I, must, I owe an apology to all of you because I have not been able to interact with every one of you the way normally I do. Because I had my tooth first extracted the day I came, actually. I didn't know it was going to cause so much of pain. I had to be under so sedation and uh, so, so many tablets, and I'm not used to these medicines. So I could 
may ten may conversate with you absolute minimum. So many ask you, so many ask you ask me about Sri Lanka, Rajiv Gandhi assassination, CBI, corruption, and the various things. I I did not continue the conversation because it was very painful for me to talk. So I owe an apology to you. Otherwise, no, I look forward to these occasions more to learn from the participants than, you know, giving any knowledge to others. But then it went on, even now I am under pain. The doctor, I told doctor, you told me it will be only for a day. He said, no, but the root, you know, the root is being pulled out. It, it's, a, it's a minor op surgery. We told you not to travel, you travel. I said, but I never uh, broke my promise, my commitment in the last 50 years, even once. So I said, I don't want to do it. So I didn't have my cards, so yesterday only I got my cards from Delhi, so I distributed to you so that we are in touch somewhere or the other. Now, so much has been talked about, about law and the Constitution by, at the very first lecture by Justice uh, Sri Devan. And we all know very well when the society came into existence and even small groups, people have to regulate their lives and conduct by some own rules. And uh, they are not, uh, you know, we have seen the history of how they have got codified into uh, laws and uh, legislations and constitutions and all that. And so also, when human beings started living in groups, they had to uh, evolve a leadership, you know, someone they have to listen to, otherwise they kept fighting. So the they might was right and then the strong man became the leader. And thereafter, the process have gone in different parts of the world. You all know how the leaders. What I propose to do is, we have heard and we are benefited by listening to uh, some of the eminent personalities uh, who excelled in their own walks of life. But all the same, I thought I will make a, a formal presentation on what leadership is. It's also mostly from quoting from the leaders uh, scriptures and uh, how the leadership has evolved to over a period of time. I prepared it for an hour, but I intend to do it in 15-20 minutes and thereafter I think there will uh, be much more interest in interaction and some people wanted me to share from my own personal experience. So that I will try to do in between also. So to start with, uh, I would say that uh, this is the book I wrote on Raju and the assassination. Some of it translated into all languages. Some of the translated versions are here. You have to start somewhere. So it's in this book, you know, it was released by Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam when he was president of India. I sent the book only three days earlier. But when we assembled there, he said, please take this paragraph. Two paragraphs I like in the book. I read it. He said, no, for everybody to listen, please read it. That's also a lesson we learned. And he said, in his own life also, that was the truth, what happened. What is, uh, if you want everything to be perfect, if you want to do everything in a manner where there is no scope for lapse, then you would prefer to do nothing. When you walk, there is a possibility of stumbling. If you walk fast, the chances are more. If you literally have to run all the time, like we had to do during the investigation under challenging circumstances, the possibility of faltering increases. If you want to avoid that risk totally, then you have to simply sit idle and do nothing. But the SIT, that is of which I was the leader, believed in doing that its task of facing unprecedented challenges at all costs and at great speed. He said, I liked it. He said, another para he asked me to read, which he said he liked of all the. He said, on the day, on the very first day, I met the available officers of the CBI in Chennai. They started telling me that I had taken, an, taken on an impossible task. They said it was a blind case and no one had even the remotest idea as to how it happened and who could have done that dastardly act. I wrote down a couple of sentences on a piece of paper, got it written in bold letters in good handwriting on a larger sheet of paper 
got that fixed on your cardboard and got it displayed prominently on the wall behind my table in my office room. It read, nothing is impossible. What is considered impossible takes more time, more effort and enormous risk. And uh, these are the two chap paragraphs he said I like because that is that also true in my own life, he said. So there have been setbacks to him, but then uh, undeterred he proceeded further, he could achieve success. And he also said nothing is impossible. So these are the two paragraphs which uh, President Kalam liked. So I thought I will start by reading this to you. Now I'll go to my formal presentation of what leadership is and should be, and then we'll come back to discussing the other issues. Leadership has been described as the process of social influence in which one person can enlist the aid and support of others in the accomplishment of a common task. It is organizing a group of people to achieve a common goal. The leader may or may not have any formal authority. For example, Mahatma Gandhi never had any formal authority. Leadership is influencing people to get things done to a standard and quality above their norm and doing it willingly. Its attributes are inner or personal qualities that constitute effective leadership. Is a person capable of inspiring and associating others with a dream? Leaders should master interpersonal relationship with individuals and groups. Your success depends upon your overall professional competence, energy, courage of conviction, intellectual integrity, and a commitment to law and justice. As a leader, you have to bring a special passion for the job, understand your vision, create community partnership, prioritize victim service, and customer satisfaction, become the center of leadership, foster innovations and excellence, think collectively, be a coach and facilitator, provide participatory management and empowerment, ensure high levels of morale and enthusiasm, foster harmony and unity in diversity. Here is a champion doing you know, diversity. Continually evaluate change forces, Master the vital art of effective communication. Remain a student learner all the time. At the age of 96, I used to see Dr. B.K. Sengar, the great yoga charya in Pune, doing sirsasan for 40 minutes and yoga for two hours, three hours a day. I used to ask Guruji, why are you doing it now? He said, I keep learning. He said, you are a master. You have created thousands of Ayyengar uh, yoga teachers around. He says, I am still learning. There is so much to learn. What I have learned is very little. Remain a student learner all the time, practice humility. See, Dr. Abdul Kalam is a great scientist, all right. But I used to tell him also, we have been very close for a long time, there have been equally competent scientists in this country. But uh, the one quality which uh, made him the darling of the masses, you know, as our own president, uh, Pranam Mukherjee said, he is people's president for all time. President of India said that, used the word is because of his uh, many qualities like humility, integrity, transparency and simplicity and patriotism and uh, caring and for the common man all the time, you know. So, practice humility, le lead change, raise professional standards, learn and have the courage to delegate the authority and take overall responsibility when problems arise. We have heard the stories of J.R.D. Tata and Ratan Tata and, you know, successors, they could, not, they could not handle everything. They may not have known intricacies of various uh, industries they started, but their secret of success is selecting the right people, delegating total authority and trusting them. That is the secret of their success. So to meet the challenges of the 21st century, some of the personal attributes most necessary for successful leadership both in the government and corporate sectors are, sometimes they may be repetition, but that shows how these qualities are very important. Integrity and character, at most. A positive attitude, courage to manage the self first, 
before you can manage others, you know. That is why uh, the need for uh, practicing some yoga and spiritual practices. We may belong to any religion, doesn't matter. Faith in uh, some supreme being in divinity and practicing yoga asanas and uh, meditation. That gives you uh, the courage to manage yourself. The technology to manage oneself comes out of not in management schools, it will be only in spiritual practices. The courage to manage organizational change, moral fortitude, compassion. Compassion, I had the privilege of sharing a table with Mr. Atan Tata in Switzerland, uh, you know, government of Switzerland honored him with the utmost honor. And there was a dinner in the Switzerland embassy and uh, I had the privilege of sharing the table for the dinner along with him. And uh, he, I asked him about 2611 and things like that. He was telling that after 2611, you know, you all know how much of sacrifice the people in the Taj Hotel did. And he said when he visited the hospitals, uh, he found uh, not only his own employees, so many others who were in the street who were injured, they were also there. And he said there was an old lady, the hospital uh, raised a bill of five, six lakhs of rupees. Already they were not prepared to treat her because there's nobody will pay for her. Then he said, no. I said, we will take, uh, the company will meet the charge, medical expenses of all those people who are injured. See the compassion. Another story you must have heard. Oh, you know, there was a flat tire between Pune and Bombay and uh, they were trying to change the, the wheel, no, tire. And the, some of the top executives were also there, another car. So they were looking for where is Mr. Ratan Tata. They found he was helping the driver in changing this. I mean, these are not, you can't do it for exhibition. Unless it is your inborn quality, inner quality of being such a good person, compassion, desire to continuously learning and improvement, willingness to lead, honesty, personal integrity, vision, innovation, capacity, willingness to grow or change, ability. The young, young lady was telling how she is, you know, leading about 3,000 people doing some diversity, you know, that is a courage. You take responsibility, you need courage to take responsibility. Ability to inspire, motivate staff. Ability to function as a team builder and player. What is required at every level of leadership are three qualities. That is, self-motivation, self-inspiration, spiritual elevation. Only those who have the ability to subordinate their ego to the greater good inspire trust. As we mentioned earlier, the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, had no guns, no money, but he had the power to move hundreds of millions of people. Now, in our country earlier, now all over the world, he had their trust and they walked behind him. He had the moral courage, transparent integrity, and commitment to the cause of truth and non-violence. They do, the leaders do what is right. They show new ways of leading organizations all the time, successfully managing changes that are occurring all the time. So leadership is a matter of how to win the loyalty and trust of the people with whom we work and to serve whom we have been appointed. Leaders realize people are our most important asset. People are the soul, S-O-U-L, of our organizations. The leaders share success widely while accepting responsibility for shortfalls and failures. We heard from Mr. Muthuraman how they recognized the honored failures also. Because they dared to do something, they could not reach the target, but for their courage, they are appreciated. The leaders have vision and mission. Vision is a combination of many elements. Leadership innovates, involves both vision and mission. Vision is an image of the future we seek to create. Mission provides a guiding star. Vision translates mission into truly meaningful intended results. By three methods, we may learn wisdom. First, by reflection, which is the noblest. Second, by initiation, imitation and initiation, which is easiest. And third, experience, which is the bitterest. We tell the child, don't touch, don't go near the fire, understands. 
doesn't want to feel, he wants to feel it, then he gets hurt, then learns it. That is the bitterest way of doing it. The thing is, you have your ideal leader and have faith in the person and follow what he says. Otherwise, you will commit mistakes and learn much later. So the Bhagavad Gita says, whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. You see, the I've been closely at with some of the Tata institutions. Is all um, trying to follow the Yadi Tata, Ratan Tata, and down the line. Their values are very high. Efficiency is there. Apart from that, you know, the way they conduct themselves, they maintain their dignity, integrity, at the same time being humble and simple. Okay. What is the difference between a manager and a leader? The Fortune magazine I am quoting, the manager administers, the leader innovates, the manager maintains, the leader develops, the manager relies on systems, the leader relies on people, the manager counts on controls, the leader counts on trust, the manager does things right, the leader does the right thing always. So a good leader commands the highest respect because he is trustworthy, dependable and gives strength and courage to those around him. The success of a leader is determined not by how much wealth he has accumulated or what position or power he enjoys, but how many hearts he has been able to win and how many he is able to serve effectively. So a leader must have the right balance and combination of vision, values, competence, courage and character. One without the other will not work. A great leader is one who never wastes his time. He is never short of time for the good he can do. Don't say you don't have enough time. You have this exactly the same number of hours per day. You must have heard it number of times earlier also. You have the say exactly the same number of hours per day that were given to Helen Keller, Pasture, Michelangelo, Mother Teresa, Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Jefferson, and Albert Einstein, and of course our own Mahatma Gandhi. I had a long conversation with Mr. Narendra Modi just a few weeks before he became Prime Minister. He was Chief Minister of Gujarat at Ahmedabad. Uh, I am the chairman of the Gujarat State Advisory Council for the ambulance service, EMRA 108. We run 9,000 ambulances in the country today, covering 70% of the population. And uh, even according to C.K. Prahla, the management guru, who wrote an article in the Harvard Business Review, he is one of the most modern innovations of, I mean, modern India's sex of innovation. 9,000 ambulances being run. And uh, we have calculated five to 600 lives are saved every day by the efficient operation of this service. 150 to 200 children are born every day in the moving vehicles, even today. So in that connection, when I go for the meeting, I call on the chief minister if he's there. I've called on him a number of times. So this is just two, three, four weeks before the election. And uh, I go, and in case the chief minister is there, I meet him. It so happened he was coming just for a day or half a day, and he said that he would like to meet us, so we went with my team. Mm, he said, you know, that's my favorite subject. There's only one we, thing we do for the poor of the country. Anybody rings up 108 within 5 to 10 minutes or 12 minutes, the vehicle goes there, the affected person is picked up, taken to the nearest hospital, give them, uh, you know, the best possible treatment initially, and that's my favorite subject. Okay, I, I will do whatever they want. But I stay, please stay back, I won't talk to you. So I stayed back. It went, extended to a long conversation for more than an hour. That's not important. He gave me the space to ask questions. All allegations against him. He gave me the space. So I asked him the question because I'm not seeking any favor from him. I never sought, I will never seek also. That I know very well. But he was good enough to give me the space and answer each one of them, including Godra, Encounter death, um, why Loka Aikta was not appointed, supposed to be malnutrition among the children, why Adwani was uh, against you, all these questions. He gave me the space. Anyway, that's not important now. I asked the last question Sir, being a chief minister of a state is a full time job. 
you have to work round the clock, either party work or government work. And you are one uh, particular about perfection, everything being done. Now you have agreed to be the prime ministerial candidate for the major opposition party, BJP, at that time. India is not a country, it's a continent. You have to keep moving all the time from corner to corner. I asked this question, sir, where will you find the time and energy to handle both at the same time? And uh, he smiled and told me, Kathikanji, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day, 90 minutes of yoga asanas, pranayama, meditation. Without that, I don't start the day. So this is the first charge on my 24 hours. And I've been doing it from younger days. I don't know what fatigue is. Come at 10 o'clock in the night, you will see my office here or home office or I will be in the traveling in the districts. So this, I wrote about it even before became PM in a farmer's magazine. In Tamil. I keep repeating it everywhere because to say, I don't have time. Many people say, yes, I would like to do yoga asana. I would like to go for exercise, but I don't have the time, I'm busy. And nobody can be busier than Mr. Modi. And even today he does it, I know very well. Wherever he goes, he does it. And because of the discipline, you know, when he visited uh, USA during Navaratra, he observes fast also. Ten programs a day, six days. <coughs> Sipping, I thought he was dripping juice or tea. The other day, Vivekananda Yoga University, the gentleman who goes for practice with him, he says, no, sir, only water during those days. An, an English paper reported, I think published in America, or here, you must have seen it. They said on the sixth day, when the American President Obama gives a banquet to the visiting Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and naturally the lavish food everywhere, you know, and this gentleman has been drinking something from the water. So it seems Obama asked him, how can you do that? He said, yoga. So Obama says, I must also do yoga. But I'm told he does yoga every day now. I'm just telling to say, wherever I go to management schools and colleges, call and everything, I make it a point to tell this, because don't say you don't have time to look after your own health. See, to be a leader, first you may be a healthy person. Physically healthy. Unless you are physically healthy, where is the question of mental alertness? How will you develop spiritual qualities also? Even the spiritual masters, you know, there is a slogan in Tamil, to become even an enlightened master, you have to take care of the body where the Lord resides. This is a temple. It is described, body is created as a temple in which the divinity lives. So if you don't take care of the temple where the God lives, what are you capable of doing in life? So, I have mentioned to you, so nobody can say that we don't have a short of time. I'm happy all of you are perfectly fit. Happy to see that. And many of you go for a morning walk and some of you do yoga. I want to tell you, I do also do yoga. I have not come and joined you, but I do it in my room every morning. Otherwise, I can't be traveling around 21 days in a month uh, constantly. And I am not young like you. I am at least, uh, I think some of you were not even born when I, <laughs> when I did the investigation. Some people say that, you know. So, why is there a credibility gap and distrust in today's leaders? We see that in public life. I have no hesitation saying that. I say it on the TV also because I don't do anyone, anything to anyone except to my, to my creator, my colleagues. Why is there a credibility gap? Because they change their positions, deviating from their principles to suit. They think that is going to give them short-term benefit. So they do it. So because totally the credibility is lost. Some of them with credibility, but the public perception is the leaders don't have credibility. They're very unfortunate in a democracy. In a democracy, after all, the every major change has to come through only political parties and leaders. So unless the leaders, uh, the public trust their leaders, they will not cooperate with them in implementing their policies also. So patriotism, you can't say. Patriotism is supporting your country all the time. But Support the country only when it deserves it. When it deserve, doesn't deserve, you don't have to support it. So you will not be unpatriotic. So this I'm quoting Mark Twain said that. Mark Twain, the humorist said, 1835, he said that, patriotism is supporting your country all the time and the government when it deserves it. 
Same thing yesterday we heard from others also, Mr. Rahman. In internal discussion, you must be very, um, very easy, viol not violently, I won't use it, very strongly differ from the proposition of the management also. Your point of view, you should not think that it is, oh, we have to say yes to everything. That means we are not being loyal to the organization also. In my own team, uh, when, when major decisions are to be taken, we met every day, all the time. Right from the IG level officer to the sub-inspector of police will be there. I ask for views and sometimes we have rejected the opinion of the IGs and I have accepted the proposal of sub-inspectors because wisdom is not a monopoly of any rank or even qualification. It can come from any, any person. So the very essence of leadership is that you have to have a vision, I told you, is the art of getting, yes. Why there is a ownership on the part of everyone in great organizations like, uh, you know, any of the Tata groups or some other organizations? Because the leadership is the art of getting someone else to do something you want done because he feels he is wanting you to do it. Leadership is the art of getting someone else to do something you want done because he wants to do it. I want you to do something but I conduct the proceedings in such a way, ultimately when the decision is taken, you feel it's your decision, you have to implement it. So crisis management is the process by which an organization deals with a major event that threatens to harm the organization, its stakeholders or the general public, but then a leader emerges successful out of that. Now, Police are coming to the subject of police. Police are the leadership qualities what applies to everyone in any walks of life, whether it's armed forces or corporates or any civilian organization. Same thing applies to police, maybe in a slightly um, you know, stronger uh, emphasis, actually. So the urgent need of the day is to make the police a truly professional force, elevate the professional standards by right recruitment policy, well-structured training process and policy. I'd like Mr. Mr. Sivanand, we asked you two questions. I'm trying to answer which are, some of the questions which are likely to arise only, some of them only. So police are part of community. From where did we get the policeman? Is your, your uncle was a police officer, your son is a police officer, your nephew, someone amongst us, you know, because everybody cannot do every job. Some of us said some of us should become doctors, some of us should become judges, some should become policemen. Doing the very difficult, very, very often is a, a thankless job. But someone has to do it. So it's our own society we have decided on that. So that must be, uh, con we must be conscious of that. So police leaders, more than anybody else, should master interpersonal relationship with individuals and groups within the organization and within the community also. In the force today, unlike, you know, those days when I was uh, entering the service, we could take people, constables, you know, 8th standard, 10th standard, uh, uh, SSLC used to call it, 12th standard is really a highly qualified person. Today, I'm telling you, more and more personnel are joining other ranks with higher qualifications. Graduates, postgraduates, thousands of people, the other day, the DG of UP was telling me, thousands of people who applied and more, many of them who have uh, graduates, postgraduates, and all that. So higher qualification, people are more educated today, not like before. So even postgraduate, law graduates are joining as constables and head constables. So police leadership, just those days you can just pass an order, we don't explain why you're doing that order. Today, we have to be prepared to offer explanations, reasons, and justification for their decisions. They will obey the order. But you have to explain to them why you are taking such a decision so that they are totally with you in enforcing those decisions. Mounting local, state, central legislation, complicate analytical and planning decision-making process and multiplies workloads. Domestic and international terrorism, cyber crime, organized crime, and other white-collar crimes are mounting. See, a police officer has to take a decision in a moment. There's a rioting take place. A man on the spot need not necessarily be a senior officer in villages and all that. He has to take a decision. How far to persuade them to disperse? And suppose it's going to result in killing each other or communal violence or destruction of a place of worship. 
he has to intervene with force. When to use the force, how much to use the force, whether it's uh, tear gas, uh, latte charge, or police firing, all that you have to take in a moment. But all this will be discussed, debated in commissions of inquiry later on. What a poor sub-inspector of police has taken decision at the spur of the moment, which he thought was the right thing to do, will be debated in commissions of inquiry and high courts and supreme courts, eminent judges, lawyers arguing, all that. So that is a responsibility attached to them. So we have to attach a lot of importance to the right person being recruited and the training. You have to bring a special passion for the job. Understand your vision, create community partnership, prioritize victim service and customer satisfaction, etc., etc. What I said for leadership over the others will apply to them also more. Again, vital art of communication is very, very important. See, now when you say personal experience, it necessarily will say what I did. It's very embarrassing for me to do it. But then uh, there is no other way of explaining it. I recollect uh, many, many incidents in the HL. You know, Bangalore Airport, I was a Deputy Commissioner of Police Law and Order. I was the only one DCP then for the whole city. And now there are eight people. Of course, the population has also increased. Uh, they are, yeah, bus of the HAL company, driven by an HAL employee, ran over a HAL employee. That man died. So in no time, you know, about 10,000 people gathered and they will not allow any it old near the old airport. At that time, there was only airport. No vehicles. So we had to go. So I have to take a decision in a moment because we can go with a force, but then 10,000 people against maybe 40, 50 men, it's quite possible they will turn violent. If they turn violent, they assault somebody, our men also will turn violent. So we have to, I said, no, this is not a matter in which you know, we can use force, but they will not allow the whole force to go. So I had to walk with a lati and a wireless set and a helmet. Walk through then, why, they all knew me at that time, so I walked through up to the place where it took place, where the body was lying. Then I got onto the bus and told them, it is your own employee who was driving the bus. Management has no responsibility for that. You can't blame the government for that. You can't blame the police for that. It is an accident. Of course, we'll deal with him. We'll arrest him, prosecute him and all that. But what is the idea of holding up the whole thing? Your company will suffer. The people are going to be inconvenienced and all that. It is after an hour or so, dissuaded them and all that, come back. They could have turned violent. One of them could have thrown a stone at me. A stone at me, an injury, my men would not be keeping quiet. These are all risks all the time. So a man has to take quick decision, and then, as I will come to you again, you have to be trust in God. With all your abilities and things like that, competence, you have to pray. I have seen so many communally sensitive incidents, uh, incidents which could have broken into them, whether here, Darwar or Belgaum districts, all communal area here, Bangalore itself, it, anything could have triggered a communal violence. After doing all that is possible, then pray to the divine. I'm telling you, the best of surgeons, many, my very dear friends tell me, heart surgery experts, they say before they take the knife open, they pray. Because the same surgeon operating two persons, one person dies, one person survives. They say, we always, truly, we pray to, for the divine, help us to succeed. So you must have faith in God. You, God must, whether you belong to Islam or Hindu or Christian or any community, have faith in the divine. There is ultimately, there is only one divinity that gives you enormous strength and power. Okay. So what police officers do that makes them leaders? There is... Five activities of successful leaders are problem solving, creating a shared vision for the whole force, engendering organizational commitment. We have to maintain peace, order at any cost, caring for the subordinates. You have to take care of the subordinates and driving and managing change. Here I will bring one episode in Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember the story still. The book, it's in all languages. There at that time, there was one, you see, the whole thing will take four hours, but I'll only go for that episode. One person, Shanmugam, was taken into custody by us in Kodiakare, in the border. He was helping the LTT procure the arms and wireless sets and take them to across. So 
we went to pick him up. He cooperated with us. I spoke to him also. Then I sent to one of the one DIG along with the force to Kodiakare. He said he will help us to unearth what all kept hidden in the the DIG, Mr. Sri Kumar, later on became the DG of Karnataka also. I sent a team. Then my when I took over the investigation, I, when the government of India asked me, persuaded me to take it up, I said, no politics, no third degree. Whether the case is detected or not, I don't believe in it. Third thing was, I must be part of the Central Reserve Police Force because CB was only a big name. They hardly had any logistic support and all that. So they go there, they have recovered a lot. I went, I went by helicopter, saw that and came back. Then we said, we treat him with respect. Everybody be treated with respect. So the DG asked me later on when I returned, sir, he wants to spend, have his dinner in his house. He has been cooperating with us. I said, yes. He was allowed to have his dinner, spend time with his family. But night, they brought him to the inspection bungalow, Diamonding House. There, again, the evening of the interrogation, he was having food along with his uncle who was picked up later on locally. That man told him, you have brought disgrace to this country, to the community. It's all right, you know, you can smuggle and all, it's okay, but you have become anti-national. You have helped the people to come and kill Rajiv Gandhi, our national leader. And your photo is always all in the local papers. So this man suddenly left the halfway through, got went out to the, washed the hands outside the door, disappeared, bolted. So he calls me and tells me, my DIG, Shanmugam, escaped. I said, please get him because I am worried because they, they may get hold of him and kill him. And this is a case in which I said, nobody will be touched. They searched the whole day, the next morning he calls me at 4 o'clock, Sir Shanmugam is hanging, he has committed suicide. I said, who is going to believe us now? He was in CBA custody. They will say we killed him. That was I said, okay, no, hand over the investigation to the local police. CBA will not investigate. Call the doctors, call the magistrate, open, everything should be done transparently. Then I went by helicopter again and saw that and came back. It was a big, at that time, you don't know, the parliament was in also in turbulence. They are telling you what is being, uh, being, people being arrested or being killed and things like that, you know. You know what uncharitable remarks can come. So when the Home Minister came, Mr. Chavan was the Union Home Minister, he came all the way to Madras. The next day, so Sunday, Monday was the Parliament session. He came, we met him, he said, uh, he didn't want anybody else, he said only he wanted me to travel with him. He wanted to go to the spot. Union Home Minister, see this is the situation. So eight hours I was with him in the helicopter and all that. We could not land there because there was no prior landing, trial landing. Explained everything and came back to Madras airport. The uh, media surrounded him. Then he told me while coming back, he please suspend the officer's concern. I said, no, I won't. I said, what did they do? Why, how can I suspend them? They were, uh, three days they were without food and water and uh, it's a risky job, they were doing it. And if they find there is any fault on their part, then we'll have to inquire and normally do it. No, no, how will I face the parliament, he asked. I told him, sir, I don't know. But this is a case in which, you know, there's also another chapter here. Is a case where, you know, neither in the police nor in the CBA, we are told to. So what does the CBA do? CBA does the investigation. Very often file the charge sheet without even arresting the accused. Here is a case of terrorism. The IB and the RAW have no information who could have done it. Openly they have said that. And we are not told how to collect intelligence, how to track these people, how to do these operations. All these people are doing because of me. Because they trust in me that I am asked them to do it. I am working around the clock. They are working around the clock. And I am not going to sacrifice you. At least this is sub-inspector, inspector. I said, no sir, not as inconceivable. I had the courage to tell the Home Minister I will not suspend anybody. If anybody is suspended, okay. Parliament, you have a problem? I said, I'll take responsibility and quit. I told him. As the leader of the SIT, I am overall charge of investigation. If there is a, I quit. 
you can announce that I take responsibility or to take action, whatever you want to take. So, but then when the press people asked him, he said, no, they have done a great job because he couldn't tell the event. I rang up the director of CB Delhi, I told him, I said, obviously they have made their mind to suspend somebody. I want to tell you, I didn't ask for the job. You people persuade me to take up the job. If anyone is suspended, I quit. I quit in public. Then the director went to the prime minister. They had already prepared a statement to announce that so-and-so will be suspended and all that. They did not do it. Of course, we have to take a lot of abuse and all that. And then after, you know, conducting the only thing was when he went out, there was no guard outside. But then he behaved in such a way, most trustworthy manner. He thought he has been shamed. Because his name has come in the local papers, why should I leave you committed suicide? It took a long time and all that thing. So what I'm saying is you have to defend. You have to defend your subordinates when they are not at fault. But I've also suspended, dismissed about 200 people in my career. If my officer is found in uniform, found drunk, or in allegation of his being with a woman, I don't spare them. Anymore. But not when they are not at fault, you have to defend. So the, he told the Prime Minister, he said he will definitely do it. You announce suspension, he will quit. He will have a problem. Because later on I found nobody was willing to take it up in Delhi. That's how they came to me. That was, a, that was known to me later on, much later. So you have to support your subordinates when they are on the right. And driving and managing the change and all that. And five key activities emerge as important for police leaders in my experience. That is shared vision. Create a shared vision with your whole team. Everybody should be with you. They should think they are doing their job, you know, it's a personal thing. Problem solving, engendering organizational commitment, uh, caring for subordinates and driving and managing change, I told you. Then, then some more characteristics are being ethical. See, they must see the leader as being ethical, which is very important. Otherwise, you don't have the authority. It's not, people are obeying you not because you can dismiss them or arrest them or something. Obey you out of respect for you, more than that. So ethical, become a role model. You expect them to work for, I asked Mr. Nirpendra Mishra, the principal secretary to the prime minister in Rashtrapati in reception. I mean, I didn't intend, just now it comes to me. I asked him, how is it working with Mr. Modi? He said, he said, hot up. He said 8.30 he's in the office. If he's in the office, until 8.30 he works. But that means, no, but we have to work a day, an hour earlier, an hour later. But it's all right, because he's clear, clear vision. We know what the Prime Minister's mind is and there's no, we can take decisions. So, you're expecting work from them, you have to work at least that much, if not longer than what you expect from the, your subordinates, junior officers. Good communication skill, being a critical and creative thinker, being a decision maker, being trustworthy, and being regarded as legitimate. They should know that your actions are all legitimate, fair, impartial there. So, like, um, I will also skip quite a lot because um, you will have time to... So, police are required, police leaders are required to understand and effectively operate in a complex social, political, organizational environment. Every day is a challenge. Every incident is different. Good leadership is widely considered fundamental to high performance in such realms and as such the need for good police leadership is greater than ever. I must tell you one more personal episode here. I was uh, ASP, ASP is the police in a place called Gulbarga. Now, when I joined the service in Karnataka, I was sent for training to Gulbarga, that is the northernmost district, you know, Shalapur and all that, closer to Hyderabad. My father had, my father had, you know, suffered a heart attack. That was in Coimbatore. We are from a farming family. So, my training is over, I am to be posted to a subdivision, yes, assistant superintendent police, deputy superintendent of police and all that, in charge of him. So, I met the, my inspector, at that time he's called Inspector General of Police, Mr. Vasali, he was a good officer, but anyhow, I called on him and told him, my father is suffering, I went and, I must be closer to Coimbatore. In case of an emergency, I should be able to reach in time. So, please post me to Old Mysore, Old Mysore means this side. Mm. Southern Mysore, you can call it. From here, it's going to about six hours, eight hours, something. He said, no, young man, then you will be spending all your time in hometown, going all the time. I said, no, sir. 
I won't go only in the case of Mirza. He wants to be assured that I'm nearby, more than me. For some strange reason, he posted me to the furthermost place. That is Shahbaz subdivision. Then I took I uh, I took the decision that in my service, I will always consult my juniors, their requirements, and try to accommodate the request every time. I have done it. Thousands of postings we have done in state police and CBA and all that, CRPF and all that. I have done it. One. This is the way you can take it up. Or you can say, I suffered, let me also make others suffer. Another thing, when I was, then I was as uh, Darwar, Subhanda Police, the Darwar district, the largest district at the state at that time. I had just taken over three weeks before my sister's marriage. So I had to go, taken leave and went to, two days before the marriage, the holy function, there was a communal rioting in Hubli Darwar. Now there are four districts, there was only one district at that time. I had gone to Temple Town, Palani to make the arrangements. Two days later, the marriage was to take place. I get a call from the DIG headquarters telling, communal rioting, people are killed, assembly in session, uh, government is in trouble, IG wants you to go back. He said, if Karthikeyan had been there, it would not have taken place, they have missed it up and all that. I told him, I said, after tomorrow is my sister's wedding. Then my father was not well also at that time. But he said, I can, for Karthikeyan, for your sake, I can tell a lie. I could not reach you. I said, no, I don't want you to tell a lie. He's a very, a very honest, true Christian. Albert Manuraj was his name. I said, I don't want to tell a lie for me. Okay, if that is the call of duty. I came back from Palni to Coimbatore. I told my parents, my mother said, leave the service. Resign from the service. We don't want the service. I said, even if I want to resign the service, I have to go back and deal with it and then resign. Anyhow, I came back overnight to Bangalore. That morning, uh, the Home Secretary and the IG, they, they, I was asked to join them to go to Hubli. I was very angry, but I didn't say anything. Then the Home Secretary told him, Hosari, why did you call Karthikeyan? So many officers are there. You have not been fair to him and all that. No, no, no. I have faith in him. If he had been there, this would not have taken place. I didn't talk. So when we went there, and we got into the duty and all that. I said, I took a resolution. I will never recall anybody from leave. That uh, tuition, I took. See, you, I will never recall unless it becomes totally. I said, I will go and do it. See, these are decisions you go through in life. But you can take the decision either way. It happened to me, it should happen. Why should I bother about others also? So, so, so I think I will, uh, I will not go into the theory part of it now. Yes, see, the humility, I will not go into that. So, okay, leave it. We will go into the, some practical issues now. You have to be, police officers have to be very impartial now fair and impartial, because I, I also took the decision, I will never seek any favor from anybody. Once my request to my own IG was rejected, I was posted to, I said, I will never seek a favor from anyone in my life, in my career. I tried to try, I have maintained it so far. With the result, um, one, you know, few months before Dr. Abdul Kalam passed away, we have a foundation called the Foundation for Peace, Harmony and Good Governance, my own. We have an episode every month on various subjects. We have done over 100, all, any type of subject, national conference, seminars, discussions and all that. So 10 years are over. Subha was also part of our group. And uh, they said, no, 10 years are over. We should have a function to celebrate the 10th anniversary. Then, okay, we did it. Then I requested Dr. Kalam to be the chief. He was good enough to come as chief guest. Dr. Karan Singh proceeded over the function. It's a public function recorded in my welcome address. When my welcome address, I told the audience and also Dr. Kalam. I said, then Dr. Abdul Kalam took over as president. He called me the very next day morning. Just um, he told me, you know, he used to call me, sir, when you much longer ago. Sir, you have done the greatest service to this country. You had the honor, prestige, and security of this country. You risk your life. They were about to kill you. Your wife had a heart attack. The nation owes a lot to you. All this I am telling in the presence of Dr. Kalam, record it. 
and uh, tell me I am the president of India. What is I can do for you? You want to become a governor, ambassador? Anything you tell me. I was moved by this man's simplicity and goodness, you know. The president of India, this should not be a priority on his mind, but he has been good enough to... I said, nothing, sir, I only done my duty. No, no, they are, I know they are able to kill you. Uh, you were the target, things like that. Then I told him, I don't seek. I have taken a vow not to seek anything from anybody. I know you will not ask, that's why I'm asking you, he said. I said, no, I only have done my duty to the nation. I do it. There are people who have done much greater service. You know, many of my colleagues have died in Kashmir, Punjab, Northeast. So many have done so much. I don't... Uh, and also, there is no compensation. I also told him, there is no compensation for what I have done. Then he wouldn't agree. He said, um, Welcome, good morning, director. Okay, now only um, little playback. You know, I was telling about my conversation with Dr. Abdul Kalam. He became president of India. He called me very next day one-to-one -one sitting like this. He said, you know, you've done the greatest service to the nation in this investigation. They were about to kill you. You did not allow any politics to enter. It was a tougher job, you know. So, uh, the nation owes a lot to you. And uh, please tell me, I'm the president. What do you want to become? President, governor, ambassador, anything you want. I was telling, I was moved by the man's affection and simplicity. I told him, sir, nothing. I had only done my duty to the nation. There are people who have given their lives for the nation. And I don't seek anything from anybody. He said, no, that's why I'm asking you. I said, no. He said, okay, consult your wife and come back and tell me tomorrow. I went back and asked my wonderful wife. She said, you know, you have never sought any favor from anyone, personally. You have taken up public causes. Never seen. Nothing is worth asking for and getting. A noble wife said that. Nothing is worth asking for and getting. You tell the, I said, he will ask me, you should tell the president to have his morning, regular morning walk exercise and all that. And uh, ask him, he also said that, I told him, after his lunch, he should sleep for some time before releasing visitors. Something gap I am not mentioning. Not like somebody who is to found sleep in public life and all that. I went and told him, he said, why do you say that? I told him, sir, if I ask for something, see, I can, you can't do it. You have to ask the prime minister to do it. He will do it. And I also can ask the Prime Minister, he has respect for me, then why are you not asking him? So if I ask him and do, he will do it, then at some point either he or his people will ask me to do something against my conscience. If I do it, I will lose respect for myself. If I don't do it, I am ungrateful for a man who did the favour to me. So I don't want to place myself in that position. What strange logic he said. I asked him, yes. Sir, have you asked for a favor from anybody? He said, no. Then why do you ask me to do it? Anyhow, he used to ask me on the phone. He used to call. Those days, late in the night, he used to call 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock and all that. And uh, asked me, have you changed your mind? I said, no, I've not changed my mind. Right. So, about talking about the calls, a year after he became president, I'm telling you the nobility and simplicity of the man. There's no way, because Mr. Muthraman was also, also telling about it. About maybe a year later, one day he calls me around midnight. He asked me in Tamil, he used to speak in Tamil. I said, now we had to have dinner at 10 o'clock, not like you. He used to have it for dinner at 1 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock and all that. He asked me, sir, when did we first meet? You know, this is the simplicity of the man. See, like a child. Do you think it was in Hyderabad? Hyderabad, when I was there, I had invited him as a scientist to give a talk for people. It was called Meiri Manjir, it's a beautiful bungalow. Nawab style. You see, I, he wouldn't allow me even to think. He said, do you think it was in Hyderabad? He said, no, even 10 years earlier. He said, you were, I came to Madras, you were in Isro guest house. I came to Madras, midnight, the police guard was there, I asked them, said, Mr. Kartikin is staying there upstairs. I always want to talk, see you. Because you, at that time, you know, a lot of uh, media hype, every day something. You were a hero at that time. I always wanted to, to see you. Then I, mid, I saw the time, midnight, I didn't want to come and disturb you. Morning, 7 o'clock, I came and knocked at your door. Morning, sometime, he said. You didn't open the door for a long time. But I, want, I wanted to see you in any case. After some time, 
I knocked at the door louder. Again, after a few minutes only, you came and opened the door. President Kalam telling me, uh, after a year of from Rashtra Bhavan, then you are wasting, a, waste, you know, dhoti. Dhoti, you are in with a banyan and roti, and you are having a holy ash, tirinirum, vibhudi, ne? Then he said, I am Kalam, I am Abdul Kalam. He said, I am so sorry, I was in meditation. What this has relevance to the President of India? He said, I have mentioned this to so many gatherings without mentioning your name. I have a friend who is a very efficient police officer, honest police officer, a man of great courage. When I first met him, he was in meditation. He will talk like that, you know. Like that noble person. Anyway, so many episodes of Kalam we can keep telling. That is not necessary. I told you about, um, yes, media. My relationship with the media has been very, very cordial. When I was here, um, I used to be Deputy Commissioner, I told you, a lot of violence those days, you know. The formal agitation was there. Then public sector units were all in strike. Six lakhs of workers, you know this, the Bangalore, around all major public sector workers. The media used to, um, Sachidana the Murthy, all the top ranking uh, editors, you know, Raj Chengappa, they were all cub reporters those days. And they said, we have an arrangement. I said, don't tell, don't write what I say. Don't write what others say. Why don't you be a party to the whole thing? So by 10-11, they will ring up, the control room will say, yes, something is developing today. They will all come. I used to give them a van with wire mesh, full protection. When I go for action, I said, you follow, you will be safe, watch what's happening. So like that, you know, there is to create a relationship. What you see, you write, I don't mind. Yes, we have, sometimes we have done excesses, you write about it. So this investigation, what happened was the whole world was watching this investigation with great attention. Even, uh, so with the result, my phone was round the clock busy because in, for the Western countries, nine, our day, night is their day, they will call me. But I had made the practice to answer the phone, every phone in the office. My phone orderly will pick it up. Then he will send it to me. If it at home, I will pick up after three rings. How much time I got? What time? Two minutes. Two minutes? <coughs> One of those, no? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the discussion is part of the discussion I've already held, I say. Okay, doesn't matter. So, this is one episode, I'll, I'll stop. So, then I had to work with the media only because, you know, paper, most of the papers have put special teams for this investigation. Hindu had six teams of investigators flowing all over. Um, what is that? Um, Frontline, Frontline magazine. One issue of Frontline magazine sold for 200, 300 rupees black market in Calcutta, even after three prints and all that. Every day they have to report something. I used to get calls from 10 Janpath. Uh, Vincent George will call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, invariably. Sir, what is the development? I said, every day what development can I give? No, the family will not go to sleep unless I find out from you what is the development and all that. So I had to share with the media because I have to keep the media with me. I don't want them to see if the media has been non-cooperative, it could have created serious problems for me. I've acknowledged it in my book also. When I go to media university in Bhopal, I always say an important partner in my victory is the media. I always tell them it's a fact. So one day I have to share with them and tell them. I said, but this is there, but don't publish it tomorrow. Because our operation is for tomorrow. They honored it. 99% of the media were totally with me. But that is possible only when you have credibility with the media. If once they think you have misled them, they don't care for you. So we have to be very careful. So one day my director rang up from Delhi. No, he wrote to me, telling the, the Home Minister says everything is happening, is coming out in the press also. So please keep the media away. I was very furious. I didn't ask for the job. Nobody in Delhi was willing and then I took it because of my admiration for Rajiv Gandhi. I'm telling you, even before Mr. Modi, I will tell this. I had nothing to do with politics, but I was a personal admirer of Rajiv Gandhi. In this first chapter, you know, I've written about my meetings with him and all that. Thing. I said, I have always believed in keeping the media with us for achieving the public purpose. If you want me to keep the media away from the, I will not be, I will not be able to do this job. You can appoint somebody else. This is only known to three, four of us that 
in my team because it was a very serious matter. Never went to the public because it would have been a big problem at that time. I can tell you today. I wrote to them. I said, yes, I didn't ask for the job. Please put somebody on the job for me. Let them carry it. I have no other way of dealing with it, accepting the media with me because media was cooperating with me. That uh, stopped that ended in another. Okay. Now I think uh, we can go on like this for hours together. No. Now I will stop now. Any specific questions you have got on? Yesterday we had a meeting with some of uh, the faculty members with Dr. Subhash Chandran. That again went uh, only stopped, started with Sri Lanka, ended with Sri Lanka. Now you can ask me any question. Whatever I can, I answer. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Firstly, I want to thank you, sir, for a very passionate and uh, talk, uh, explaining your valuable experiences, uh, which one can only uh, learn from a speech and not from any theoretical classes. Uh, sir, my point is presently in today's India. Unfortunately, the police uh, uh, is on the is on the you know whether it's through the media, whether it's through public opinion, through communities, it's not, uh, I feel, uh, achieving its accolades, which it is due because of the hard work. Yes, there are, of course, black sheep in every organization, sir. Uh, my question is, sir, is it possible in our construct if we make the police apolitical? Uh, for example, uh, the armed forces in India are apolitical, sir. So whether it is Mr. Modi, Mr. Gandhi, Mrs. Gandhi, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, we do not care who is the leader in that spec. We have a, we follow a particular path, we report to the Supreme Command of the Armed Forces, who is the President, and yes, with the executive there are some link-ups. But is it possible, like other Western countries, like the UK, the US have followed a model, where the police reports to an apolitical authority, maybe the mayor, maybe the governor, wherein there may be some better uh, output, what do you feel about that, sir? Well, mayor and the governor also are political today mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. But the armed forces and the police, you know, their, their duties expected of them are entirely different. See, you rarely come into contact with the day-to-day -day public or politicians, you know. Your task is uh, all clear and uh, you say you defend the border, defend the country, attack the enemy, either kill or whatever it is, you withdraw. You don't have to deal with it. But here, the policemen are involved in every activity of the society, polity, and all that. But it's possible, it can be done, provided they make it apolitical. Not reporting to the mayor or the governor, they are political beings. So you know how they are appointed, you know, very well. They're all political beings. There are some good people there, not, uh, not so good people also. That's not the solution at all. But this is what we have been agitating for that. Make it apolitical means, you know, for example, CBA itself, you know, that CBA, Little better than before. The appointment of the director CB used to be totally with the ruling party, or the prime minister means ruling party. But now at least the leader of the opposition has to be consulted. Chief G7 India is involved. Uh, it is much better. But I would say that the ideal situation is what happens in America. You know, they have to appear public. People wanting to come for high office, whether an ambassador or uh, director CBA, they have to appear before the Senate committee. Their entire past is scrutinized. Personal integrity, their competence, past history, all that is there. And very few people offer themselves because if they have something to be ashamed of, they don't even volunteer. Here, everyone puts pressure. Unfortunately, that's a fact of life, you know. So ultimately, you should, uh, and also give them a tenure. And after the appointment, I am I'm talking even in a, in a judicial conference, I mentioned this in Vijnana Bhavan, presided over by the Supreme Court judge. By all means, raise the age of retirement of Supreme Court judges, but never give them post-retirement benefit jobs, commissions of inquiry, because people look forward to that. Human nature, no? How many people are willing to do it? I know of some outstanding judges, they refuse to accept anything. But there are also judges who lobby for it. And the perception, whether it's true or not, towards the end of the a tenure, whether it's IAS or IPS officers or judges, I don't mind telling boldly. People look for post-retirement benefit. I could have got it. I told you, President offered it to me. I declined. Five years of uh, huge mansion and uh, flying the flag and power and all that. It's a question of your own uh, your integrity, that's all. That's all. Unless the policy is made apolitical, 
this will not happen in this country. It's possible because, you know, British Bobby, 20, 30 years back, if you have gone there, uh, Nolan, Nolan Commission uh, survey, the police was the lowest credibility. Today, the credibility of police is above that of judiciary, magistracy. It's all dependent upon the, the demand of the public. Political parties themselves won't do it here because the previous man misused it, I would like to misuse it. And things have gone bad, actually. Police stations and all their hierarchy is being destroyed now, today. Very often, I don't want to mention the states. In the National Human Rights Commission, I was invited to join. I was invited by the chairman, so I accepted it went time. I refused the extension there also. He said, no, extension is not, not, is not good. There we are found in one state, I don't know the name. The, the <laughs> SPs were transferred every four months. The collectors or deputy officials were transferred every six months. Because the man, the moment he says no to the party dada there, he gets transferred because they control the powers that be. So how will you expect them to... I asked them one, one uh, in the National Government Commission, I went to Uttar Pradesh, I can tell you now, for some allegations about something. They said, I asked the young SP, I asked him, why do you do that? One particular thing was wrong. Why do you keep quiet? Inaction. Guilty of inaction. He said, sir, in the last two years, I've got four postings. I don't mind. But what about my children? They have to change the school, then change the uniform. It costs money. At some stage, you know, we simply yield. Because the family pressure, how many times, the children are fighting, how many schools will we change? So unless the discipline comes in the political leadership. I also agree, part of the blame is also on the police leadership also. The senior, very few police officers are standing up to this also. They also yield ultimately, okay, it's happening. Things have gone worse. My days, I could assert. See, in my, I'm telling you, I was telling some of the senior politicians also, the other day in the aircraft, when I was SP Darwad, the largest district, I'm not from this state, I'm from Tamil Nadu. The chief minister used to come. I don't mind telling you, name of Mr. Virendra Patil was the chief minister. He came in the morning, travel, night, he used to come by train. He used to call me, Mr. Karthike, and these are the bundle of papers, representations made. Please look into them, do what is right. He never asked me what did he do with that transfer postings and nothing. And the opposition leader at that time was Mr. Bomai in my district, who believe was his constituency. We were in the party and Bombay belonged to different parties, opposition leader, true chief minister of leader. When I went away to Moscow and came back, the invitation came from the chief minister. He became chief minister. Bombay was leader of the opposition, chief minister. Can you imagine these days? He said, please come back as commissioner of police Bangalore. Don't stay in Delhi. That type of leadership we had, I can tell you things have gone. They are not improved at all. I do hope things will change because it has to come from the public. Media, media, you know, as you, you know, I have very close relationship with Arna Vandal. I don't go to studios, only Obi Wan come to my place and talk to them. And uh, all this, is, most of the media people are doing right. Some of them are not, unfortunately, because for the compulsions. Because, you know, the other day, last week I was here, I was staying in uh, uh, Taj West End. Evening, the huge arrangements being made in the garden. So many cameras, lights, and all that. Then the general manager told me, sir, so there's an NDTV program today. And they said, I'm gaining 20 lakhs today. See, it costs money. The TV production, you know, this costs money, and the cost has to come from somewhere. Sponsors, it has to come. Very difficult for them to be totally neutral. But at least on national issues, I want them to be neutral. On corruption issues, I want them to be neutral. You do not spare the corrupt people, expose them, and chase them. Yeah. Let's have uh, Mr. Shivana. You want to Lady. Talk okay. Thank you. Very nicely commemorated all the incidents which you have gone through, like for your father's uh, illness and your sister's uh, wedding, you missed it. Yeah, everything was going like a movie in front of us. Yeah, personally, I said. But it is. But everything is true, that's why. My best-selling book is called Triumph of Truth. Yes. Nobody has challenged one sentence of what I have written here. No, but I have, I have gone through a lot of difficulties, ups and downs. You have to accept it. You have to accept it, you know. It doesn't come, it's not a smooth sailing. Yes. My question is, uh, there are many qualities of leadership you have told, but many, I have heard that you should be diplomat also. What is 
You have to have a lot of diplomacy. Diplomacy in the sense, you know, instead of telling rudely, you can put it very politely. You can put it very politely. See, Mr. Subramanian Swami, I can tell you now, it's in in-house only. Dr. Subramanian Swami, you know very well. Who doesn't know him? He dominates the media. He used to tell me, he has been my admirer all the time, but he will tell me, very often I used to travel to Delhi because there were two commissions of inquiry, Justice Burma Commission of Inquiry, sitting judge of the Supreme Court, he became Chief Justice of India. Another Jain Commission of Inquiry, I openly say it's a politicized commission of inquiry, politicians created. Okay, I had to deal with it because people in Delhi, my colleague said, no, you handle it. I had to fly all the time from Madras to Delhi and all that. Those days the flights were always late, midnight or 12. I remember meeting him. Um, he used to tell me, Mr. Kathakir, I admire what you are doing. But you are stopped at the door of 10th Janpath, you didn't enter. He used to criticize me. You have not uh, looked into the involvement of Gandhi family. He used to, he wrote, he writes, he written books also. And I, so I had to tell him, I said, Dr. Swami, I am not obliged to anybody. I can raid any house, arrest anybody. I don't, I'm not, I don't have to seek anybody's permission. But I answer my conscience. For that, I need evidence. You give me evidence. He said, you have not done anything to Karnanadi. You have not done anything to Gopal Swami. I said, I am willing, but I am not here on a wild goose chase. I, I am not here to play with reputations. I need, at least give me some evidence to say I will. I can question anybody, I can arrest anybody. I had the freedom. I am only answerable to the court. Court also comes only after I arrest. Court cannot stop me from arresting. And the, so, diplomacy, then I have to deal with him very often. He is a very furious person, not an easy man to handle. Then I used to tell him, you give me evidence, I will do it. Convince me, I, will, I don't know, I'll ask my officers to go and read. No, certainly not, not. If you are transparent, see, I tell you, it's a question of integrity. Integrity means not only not taking money, integrity of your character, of doing what is right, refusing to do what is wrong. That is integrity. That you see, your officers see that. How will he go? You see, I want to, don't kindly, armed force officers don't mistake me for this. It's a real episode that happened in life. We have to, when we arrested some more people in that connection called the MB Agath case later on, I see they were arrested. So the government of India, I told them, don't give it to me because I'm busy with this. But the Prime Minister said, no, the SIT should handle it. So they had to be brought to Vesak Patnam, Vaisai. These people were arrested to be kept in a place. So we told the Navy, please allow them to be kept there. I will take charge the inner card and outer card and feeding everything. I don't have a place, safe place to keep them. They refused. I'm making a very responsible statement. They said we have had enough of LTT. We will have nothing to do with LTT. I put them in the police officers mess, running risk. Same thing that happened in S SAT also. For their own reasons. They had their own reasons. I had to do that. So I was called to Delhi. It's a high-level meeting. Please telling, uh, we wanted the, an army area to keep the people arrested in my case. Cabinet Secretary passed the order. But when we went there, the commander said, no. I said, I will take inner cordon security, outer cordon, feeding everything your responsibility. They said, no. We will not, we had enough of them because of the experience, in the, the Sri Lanka experience. I have to deal with them. But then I can't go out and tell the world. Then another officer who was there, an army officer in the IPKF, he had an important evidence about the involvement of one man. He said, I have seen this man driving the vehicle of LTT leaders. All that's all I wanted him to tell. He, did, he said, no. I got my, my, my wife and children. They live in Tamil Nadu. In that situation, my officers, inspectors, sub-inspectors, all, all of us, had to deal with all these people in her custody. And one man, Datta, I must tell you, an NSG man, Datta, he was a good officer. Murugan, he's one of the accused, you know? Murugan, you all read us. One, one gun. One, yes, one and the, the place we kept them, we kept them, we kept them in custody. 
uh, in my office. It was a very unsuitable place. So one day, I talk to each one of the accused in my room, separately, no handcuffs, nothing. I make them sit down and talk to them. And if the tea comes for me, I give them also tea. Each one of them every day, okay. Then, one day, Burgan tells me, Sir, Salim Ali, Sir. Salim Ali became a very, one of my wonderful, wonderful officers. He was a special director, CBA also. He just retired now. He beat me. He Tamil told me. So I asked my secretary, please ask Salim Ali to come. Salim comes, Murugan is sitting there. I asked Salim, did you beat him? He said, no, sir. I told Salim, Salim is my favorite officer. Salim, he's telling the truth. He said, yes, sir. I said, he's, whenever, whatever, we him, he says black is white, white is black. He keeps telling. We're not cooperating with the investigation. I said, even then, we have no authority to. I said, nobody will be touched here. He said, I'm sorry, sir, he went. Then this Murugan, same Murugan, because of that, he was moving around, his, uh, Colonel Datta was moving around with his uh, loaded pistol, MSGT was with us for our patients. He was moving around with pistol. Then Murugan tells me, sir, next day when he came, I picked up Colonel's pistol, I could have shot him. I could have shot all of them and then escaped. I said, you could not have escaped because there's an LMG man sitting there, he will shoot you down. But you know, I could have created a problem for you, which is true. If that had happened, I tell you, the entire parliament would have condemned me. But he said, I didn't do it because you treated us with respect. So this is a, you can, you can go on like a very popular serial, you can keep on telling true stories. <laughs> it's possible. Possible, they also respect you. See, when the trial was going on, normally in our law, at that time I was the level of uh, IG, nobody goes and sits in the trial court, you know. But because of the importance, I used to sit very often and go into court. When the accused, they get up only for the judge. But very often when I entered, they also stand up. When Nalini, when we knew she was pregnant, when we arrested her, Dr. Radha is her name, CRP, about the lady doctor, I made her see her every day. I told the officer in charge, please give her whatever she wants. You know, in our tradition, pregnant women like to eat something, we are given. I said, whatever she wants, but taste it first and then give it to her. You have to be human. You see, I am prosecuting them for something we did, but I, that doesn't mean they are, I, I can punish them every day. Yes, I know you don't have time. Yes, sir. We'll have one yes, sorry. very quick question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You could, could give me all, I'll answer quickly. Yeah. So together, all the questions. All of them together I'll tell you. You decide what you want to answer and what we can leave. I'll answer every one. Number one, how do you crack conspiracy theory, uh, conspiracies, since there is no you know, witnesses? Con number for, one. for this, I need one number. Sorry? For this, to answer this question, I need one number. Yeah. So, okay, we'll, we'll come to that. Then number two, I, I, I was told by a High Court judge that when, when this whole issue of Tada Pota was going on, do we need special laws to deal with terrorist activity? He said, uh, we don't need it because even with these uh, laws, 98% of the cases are failing in the uh, court. Because even with ordinary law, the investigative skills of police are going down and they are depending more and more on confessions. Now, I wanted to know your opinion on that. See, it's a misconception. Even and, Mr. And this, Mr. Arun Jetli asked me recently this question. What is would have happened if Tata was not there? I said I would have still entered the case. I would have still got the conviction. Correct. Mr. Arun Jetli, he's a preeminent lawyer, you know. In some function we are together. Mr. Kathian, I always wanted to ask you, tell me what would have happened if Tata was not there? I said still I would have detected the case, I would have got the conviction. Yes. So, uh, do you believe that investigative skills are going down in the in the station level and in the no, the, the investigation skills are not may not go down, but the skill of the terrorists and the criminals are going up. <laughs> going up, <laughs> they are upgrading their skills. <laughs> okay, third thing is it's often said that uh, police procedures, rules, etc., they are all colonial, made in 1860s, 70s, etc., and obviously they were not meant to serve the population. It, uh, you know, it is a colonial system. So, what is your opinion on that and reforming that, re-engineering that? The police reforms are absolutely necessary, overdue. Same like administrative reforms and judicial reforms also. See, sometimes the investigators take long time, but courts take much longer time. Years together, you know, when I, the National Human Rights Commission, on invitation I joined, 
I went to Cal Calcutta, Gauhati, his prisons I used to visit. I asked one of the persons, a life convict, you know. He said, sir, I'm here last 24 years. I said, what is the stage of your um, case? The trial has not even started. No, it's very primitive. Grave injustice being done to people. Three-fourths of the people in jail are under, under trial prisoners, not convicts. And many of them would have been released even if they had been convicted, maximum sentence had been given. Nobody looks into this. It's a fashion to talk, but nothing substantial is done. Judicial reforms also. Why should there be so many adjournments? Adjournments, you know, it's a harassment to the clients, even civil cases also. They go adjourned. But you know, some of the lawyers are paid 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs for an appearance. Companies are all right. What about individuals? See, it should be like written arguments, like American courts and all that. They give only limited time, they return arguments. Give it to them. Otherwise, they go on for hours and days together. In my appeal, of course, it's a very important or national importance, international importance. This heard appeal in the Supreme Court was heard for three months by three judges. Normally, nothing is heard more than five, ten minutes or one hour. Three days they heard. I, I was there assisting the government. It is very primitive. It's not. It's not effective. We do, should have. When I said uh, ten years back, we need a, a witness program. For example, my case, we had cited uh, thousand eighteen witnesses, but we closed the case with uh, two fifty five. That was enough to prove the case, because we thought everybody will turn hostile because of the fear, but we could uh, com complete it. And uh, that time there was a um, seminar. Mr. Ram Jethmani was the law minister. I made a statement, you know, witness protection is necessary. Otherwise, suppose all of them are turned hostile, what would I do? There is no protection to them. In America and all that, you know, they, they are treated with, given them different name, location, uh, occupation, everything is done. Mr. Ram Jatman, he said, didn't agree with me. He said, no, there is no need for it. Now, today, they all agree there is need for it. There is something, but not enough. Last thing is a specific question. It is said that uh, CBI was, uh, had arrested Yaqub Memon, actually they brought him in, he had contacted them, and then they, you know, and so on and so forth, then from Kathmandu, etc. And uh, many people argued that uh, he should have been made a state witness since he is the one, his, uh, every, uh, you know, information was able to nail uh, ISI and uh, Pakistan's involvement in 93, bomb blasts. Uh, so what is your view on that? See, one view will be is like uh, Arnav Goswami and Barkadat arguing on each side. Endless arguments can go on. There is justification for both. But it's ultimately for the government, the state, the country as a well, whole, we represent, for them to take into consideration many aspects which we may not know also. See, not every information is within our knowledge. The state has uh, access to all information. What will be the consequence of doing it? So they take the decision, we have to accept it. One last question. Yeah. The police, sir, with your experience, and you've sp spoken in your uh, lecture also about leader and manager. With your experience and having dealt with so many leaders and uh, drawing inspiration from them, how do you rate the present, uh, I would say, the RBI governor? A leader, a manager, and when he says, I am uh, Raghuraman and I do what I do, no, see, I am not, a, my knowledge on this subject is very, very limited. But I would rank him as a leader. I would rank him as a leader. I told you I admire Rajiv Gandhi as a leader. I admire Modi as a leader. There is no conflict. Individuals. Nothing to do with politics. Is that because of the Pardon? Is it because of the Yes, yes, yes. Each have their own courage of conviction and pursuing it with integrity. Yeah. See, Rajiv Gandhi didn't have the time. If he had come back to power, he would have been an outstanding prime minister. They didn't allow him to, to power. A very sad, unfortunate thing. Whole history of India changed, you know. That is where I deferred from the Supreme Court judgment. When Supreme Court upheld my investigation, applauded me personally by name, but they said it is not a case of terrorism. So I was unhappy about that, even though they praised me. How can they say? I said, how can you say it's not a case of terrorism? A foreign terrorist group comes and kills. 
a leader for what he did as prime minister and what he thought was in the interest of the country. And the whole, not only he was killed, he's, he was beyond recognition. He was recognized by the lot of shoes he was wearing. There was no body. The front portion was all blown off. Hundreds of pellets in the body. 17 others died who had nothing to do with this dispute, including the superintendent of police of uh, the district, Iqbal, on his birthday. And uh, elections were postponed. The whole history of change, India changed forever. So my argument was, if this is not an act of terrorism, what else is going to be an act of terrorism? So I differed from the judgment. I persuaded them to file a review. On my, at my instance, even though I was not in the CBI at that time, the government agreed with me, the attorney general argued. But you know, uh, review petitions are, means you know, the three judges who took the decision have to accept, yes, we did wrong. Very few will do it. We know very well it will be, it will not be accepted. But I said, let the government of India go on record that we don't agree with the judges. That is not a case of terrorism for history purposes. It is a pretty good judgment. But India, as a government, we did not agree. As a nation, we did not agree. It is not a case of terrorism. Yeah. One very last quick one. One very quick one. One last one from there. Is a brain mapping taken into consideration? Sorry? In forensic investigation. A brain mapping is uh, taken as evidence. Brain matter. Yeah, I'm to say brain, brain mapping, brain. sir. Brain mapping, mapping, of course, of course. Of course, it is not a. It's supportive evidence. By itself, you know, like a light detector test is not. It is only an eight investigation. Eight investigation may not be a proof. On that alone, conviction will not be sustained. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, after hearing your uh, talk, I am really overwhelmed by the contents and the guiding, guidance you have given to all of us. I have got a small question. Nowadays what I am finding, except few leaders, what is the reason of fall of leadership quality in the leaders of the country itself? Uh, don't mistake me when I say the people deserve, they get the leaders they deserve. <laughs> because we are uh, I think we need to be educated. Educated means not in uh, uh, subjects, but you know, in values. Values, you know, like uh, uh, shortcuts and all, you know. I don't mind people being corrupt, my job should be done. You should accept you know, fairness, you know, just. It will change. You see, things are so bad in Hong Kong. As I told you, in, Hong, in, in UK, now the credibility of police is gone above the judiciary. And uh, there's so much of corruption in many South Asian countries, you know. They are all gone above us. So there's hope. It will happen here also. <laughs> if we all of us try to do a bit in our own way, in our own circles, to don't go for shortcut methods and all that. We don't mind waiting in the queue. We will not break the queue. We will not bribe people to get my things in first. It will take a long time, but it will happen. I am very confident because the Away, I have gone to about 150 countries around the world. And even today, India is valued not because of your uh, software strength or uh, population. It's still people believe this uh, land of dharma, karma. It's essentially. I think uh, we have gone through some bad patch. Uh, we will emerge successful again. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, may I request uh, Sri Narayanan to give the vote of thanks? Dear friends, I am really amazed and enamored by the event that I have. I am rubbing shoulders with a person of eminence of Mr. Karthikeyan. Humility and simpli simplicity personified at the super cop is what Mr. Karthikeyan is. I would say he has handled the assassination of the century and successfully. And Sir. Only one minute. Sir. It's usual. It's not yes, no, I'm breaking the protocol. No, that's okay. <laughs> you see, I was uh, on. I'm involved in many organizations on invitation. I want to assure you that, because if I can decline the president's offer to make me governor ambassador, I won't seek anything from anybody. And many I decline also if I find the reputation not good. So I was in the 
board, Taj, uh, board meeting in Taj Western one day. Uh, call came during that. Two, three times call came from the Home Ministry. I said, I will do it at lunch time. They said, very urgent, so I went. So the senior officer spoke to me, telling, sir, uh, the president has awarded Padma Shri to you. Believe me, I said, but I didn't ask for it. Because it came a total surprise to me. I didn't ask for it. And uh, nobody spoke to me. I didn't speak to anybody. Nobody asked for me. I heard at a CV. No, no. Everyone felt it was long overdue. Uh, so they, now you just want to take your consent to announce to the media. Because uh, sometimes some people will reject it, no? I said, if the president has awarded, who am I to say no? Okay, fine. Then I think the night or next day, I can mention the name of the Supreme Court judge, Asif, Pas Asif uh, Pasayat. He's a Supreme Court sitting judge. Many calls came. He said, Mr. Karthikeyan, congratulations, but you should reject it, decline it. I said, sir, why? Too little for, too late for what you have done. I said, who am I to say that? Many of my colleagues have given their lives for the country. People have died in Kashmir, Punjab, Northeast. I mean, uh, in any case, you know, uh, undeserved. When, when un unasked for something happens, I can say, no. No, no, I feel this. So on the day it was presented, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was the first to come and congratulate me. Congratulations, Mr. Kathikanji. Uh, Kathikanji, he said, not Mr. Khan. I told him, sir, it came at a time when I thought I'd been totally forgotten. I'm surprised. I didn't leave him. He said, how can we forget? You've done the greatest service to the nation. Then I asked the Home Secretary, G.K. Pillai, you know, who processed it. I said, front, front of mine, I never spoke to him. I said, how did this happen? He said, very rarely it happens. Everybody said, every surprise was not given, so it came. It doesn't make any difference, I'm just telling you. What comes on us for? It came, it's fine. But then, next year, for someone whom I thought deserved, that person doesn't know what it is. I sent a recommendation telling for the, for the first recommendation of mine, this, for the following reasons, you deserve Padma Bhushan. It came. But he never spoke to anybody also. So that proves that, you know, without lobbying also, something can happen. <laughs> that proved that point, that's all. Thank you, sorry. Mm. Thank you, sir, for that uh, lovely inter interruption. So, as I said, that he has handled the assassination of the century. We had, uh, as uh, memory goes right, three assassinations in our country, Mahatma Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, and then Rajiv Gandhi, and many more across the world. But this was an unprecedented assassination, where the first time, in, probably the first time in the world, you may be able to correct me, sir, that a human bomb has been used to assassinate a, a leader. And, uh, and uh, a doctor generally does not uh, treat a patient he loves. So he loved Rajiv Gandhi and he had to handle the assassination case of uh, Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, sir, it is uh, uh, very nice of you that, uh, that you have come here uh, so humble and so simple. The sitting with us in throughout all the sessions, uh, yeah, probably half of us never knew that you were that Karthikeyan who handled the case of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi assassination. Uh, in spite of your ill health, uh, a bad tooth and pain, probably you could have taken a thing from our dentist guest yesterday. <laughs> you would have uh, given a musical treatment to your pain, sir. <laughs> I would first thank my organization for having me and sponsored me to this, uh, uh, this place where I'm able to meet a lot of accomplished uh, uh, people and also icons of the country and uh, also Nias for having invited such eminent personalities. And also I would thank Mr. Karthikeyan for being here in spite of his uh, Maybe a busy schedule and also his ill health. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Please give a standing ovation to Mr. Karthikeyan. Thank you.